Today we're going to take a look at a, a simple but fantastic groove, uh, I'll Take You There by the Staples Singers, released in 1972, which makes the song almost exactly as old as I am, which doesn't really bear thinking about. Uh, the drums were provided by the brilliant, fantastic Mr. Roger Hawkins, who's uh, provided rhythmic accompaniment to, I don't know, a ton of stuff that was recorded in Muscle Shoals, Alabama back in the day. And the very groovy bass lines provided by the incredible David Hood. Uh, the bass was actually nicked from a tune called The Liquidator, which was an old scar. So, well, at the time it wasn't old uh, because they heard the demo, I believe, and then they nicked the bass line. The groove sounds something like this. No crashes. The groove is simple, but keeping it feel good for the duration of the song and avoiding the temptation of crashing and playing all sorts of fills uh, can be tricky. Um, but this is a great number to help you get used to just sitting with a rhythmic pattern, settling in and feeling the groove bubbling up from the, the earth below. Before we get into the details of what you're meant to be playing, uh, I'd just like to point out that instead of striking the snare in the conventional way, we're going to be using a cross stick. And uh, first things first, if, if you haven't done a cross stick before, I'm giving you a quick explanation. If you already know what this is, just ignore this little section of the video. Skip forward if you like, screw the stats. Anyway, first thing, when we're playing cross stick, uh, this is what we call laying the stick across the snare drum and striking the hoop thusly. Uh, where do you hold the stick? I recommend for getting the meatiest sound, holding the stick back to front, um, meaning that you're going to hold the butt end of the stick where normally you would have the tip. So rotate your stick basically and um, hold the stick in the, the same way that you would when you're playing normally. Uh, again, thumb and forefinger like so, splaying out your fingers on the snare drum like this. And then you're going to find the right spot to strike the hoop of the drum. And uh, depending on where you hit, the stick against the hoop, um, you'll get a good sound or a bad sound. If you have the stick sticking out too far, or if you're not sticking out enough, um, it's not going to sound all that good. You want to try and find a nice woody resonance sound. Uh, in the case of this stick, it's exactly, it says 8D on here, it's a Vic Firth 8D. Uh, and that sounds really good to me, but you need to use your ears because every stick's a slightly different piece of wood. Uh, some sticks will sound okay to play cross stick uh, with the stick in the conventional direction. Uh, it's not quite as woody and sexy in my opinion, but um, it depends on the circumstances. Sometimes you can play a cross stick like that. It's a slightly mellower sound. So that's your cross stick. And the whole of this groove is played with the cross stick. Uh, occasionally, Roger Hawkins plays a snare, kind of a rim shotty, boingy sound that you might have heard uh, in listening to some ska. So let's take a look at how the groove works. We're going to start off playing eighth notes on the hi-hat and the cross stick on the snare on two and four. Backbeat. And then we're going to add another cross stick on the E of the three. So it's going to be one and And that keeps going more or less throughout the whole track. Um, make sure that you don't get too heavily into the hi-hat. I'm probably even, I'm playing a little bit rough there. So keep your hi-hat nice and soft. And let the cross stick speak nice and brightly. You don't have to work that hard. I'm only lifting the stick yay far, but uh, that'll produce a nice woody sound. Next, with the bass drum, the core elements of the bass drum, if you like, would be playing the bass on the one and the and of two. So once you feel that you've got used to this hand pattern, uh, add the bass. Uh, if you've not played 
uh, pattern like this before, you might want to go gradually start off playing the bass on the one only. And once you've played that a few times, uh, add the bass on the end of two. So it would be like this. As soon as you've got the hang of that, you're ready to play along to the song. To be honest, you can play along to the song already if you can just put the bass on the one. Uh, I recommend getting stuck in as quickly as possible. Uh, at the same time, I strongly recommend you learn how to sing the bass line. It's not too complicated. Ba ba dee da dum, dum da 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 dum, do 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 dum, dum da 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 dum, do 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 do. and so on and so on. Um, singing the key element of a song or just learning how to la-la the melody uh, really helps to internalize uh, the sense of groove. And uh, I don't know whether I'm successfully doing that here or not, but uh, in, in so far as you can, you want to get used to the uh, thought that you can play a song uh, without any other instruments or without any accompaniment at all, and the drums will feel like they, they belong in that song and the, the music and the groove uh, comes across. Okay? So singing to yourself while you're learning how to play something like this is, in my opinion, one of the best things anyone can do when you're practicing the drums. Once we've got the hang of the bass on the one and the and of two, uh, the next thing we're going to do is add a bass on the and of four. So we're going to get this. We're going to add after the and of four, the and of three. Why am I doing it in that order? Uh, don't know. I just think uh, the and of four thing appears more frequently. Um, but and of three comes next, and we can add and of three plus the and of four. So we have. Now, uh, Roger Hawkins isn't playing that throughout the song, but uh, he's improvising, uh, adding and subtracting bass notes as he feels it. And uh, what I recommend that you should do is instead of trying to imitate every single note that's played on the song, is get yourself familiar enough with the variations in uh, bass drum options uh, to make yourself comfortable with just improvising. And again, you want, you want to feel it so that, in essence, the core of your groove is always the one and the and of two, um, and then you can add and of three, and of four, and and of one as well on the odd occasion to give it flavor, to react to the feel of the song as you're playing it, right? So once you've got the hang of all those uh, varieties, you're then going to practice uh, keeping the, the one and two and, but then adding and removing the others as you see fit. And again, singing the bass to yourself. Do, 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 do. When you're comfortable enough with all of that, again, stick the track on and have a play along and see how well you can keep your groove, keep your time uh, whilst manipulating the bass drum patterns. Next, 
we get a little bit of action uh, with the hi-hat and there's some hi-hat barks, are they called that? Splashes, depending on what your terminology is. We open the hi-hat to provide a little emphasis and that occurs on the and of four mainly and occasionally on the and of two. Um, I recommend practicing being able to open the hi-hat wherever the hell you like so that you have the freedom to do it. Again, if you're playing this song down the pub, you're not trying to slavishly imitate everything that Roger Hawkins played note for note. You're trying to get the, the gist, or capture the essence of this beautiful groove, and then when you're playing with your band to kind of throw that back out into the world in your own way. So, open hi-hat on the and of four. Uh, what I'm going to do is then go back to bass drum on the one, the and of two, and then we can open the hi-hat on the and of four, and first we'll do it without the bass. Uh, coinciding with the open hi hat, right? So we're going like this. I slipped in an accidental bass there anyway, but let's add the bass now on the under four intentionally this time. Now note again that when you're uh, playing an open hi-hat sound, the uh, hi-hat only needs to be moved ever so slightly. Very often you're just relaxing enough that the cymbals move a couple of millimeters apart and it gives a very nice sound. Uh, a lot of people when they're starting out kind of lift the foot up entirely. That can be quite alarming and overwhelming. So we're not looking to do anything like that. So uh, again, if you've not done open hi-hat sound before, I don't know if it's worth doing an entire video about, but just learn how to control it. It's a, it's a beautifully variable instrument, the hi-hat, and uh, you can get a lot of nuance out of that. So just a little bit of open hi-hat, even I would almost say are on the, the side of uh, not too much open. Even that gives you a nice little accent, just relaxing the foot. practice playing that open sound with and without the bass drum coincident, yeah? Sometimes open the hi-hat on the forehand without playing the bass, sometimes play the bass and learn how to do that and feel the difference in sound that you get and it gives a nice little push to the groove a little bit more subtly when you don't add the bass to that. Roger Hawkins is also opening his hi-hat occasionally on the and of two, so again once you've got the hang of the and of four, the and of two is, uh, has the sort of same relationship to the hand pattern as the and of four and shouldn't be too challenging. So let's put our open hi-hat this time on the and of two, but not the and of four. If you're not used to playing these open hi-hat sounds, uh, I suggest that you work on being able to open the hi-hat on all the ands to start with and then all the numbers as well. So you should be able to be comfortable opening uh, your hi-hat on any part of the groove. That pretty much covers all the ingredients you need to know. Finally, uh, have a go at just improvising, sing the bass line to yourself and practice. You can play this along to the recording or just along to the, the bass line that you're singing. Do be do be do. Okay, and that pretty much wraps up all you need to know about how to play I'll Take You There. Uh, work on it until you start grooving like Roger. Now, uh, I think it's time for you to go off and practice. <laughs>